This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Have you ever wondered if there was something you missed? A gem amongst the rubble whose glint never caught your eye? I'm gonna show you a game sponsored by Disney that sold so poorly it ended its creators, and yet was received so well it is to this day nothing but legend. It went by in a split second. That killed its makers and made it the masterpiece it is today. I hope you're ready. To describe this game, words seem futile. Split seconds language is hellfire, yet I'm bound by them. A man of few words, but plenty of explosions, Michael Bay perhaps captures split second most succinctly. The 2010 graphics are masked by his trademark filter that makes the entire world look like it's sweating. In Transformers, I'd question it, but in split second, you've got a damn good reason to be all hot and bothered. The sense of speed is most clearly accentuated by the complex density of the environment and the detail of the road surface. The blurring and rate at which familiar, measurable objects go by provides a quantification for your own speed. This is compounded on once by the sound design's respect for wind, and again by tangible displays of force as your car smashes through the gates, barrels, boxes, and pipes littering the tracks. Density, meaningful blurring, wind and physics objects concoct perhaps the most visceral sense of power in an arcade racer for a decade. But that's not why you're here. Any path you take, any corner you turn, any window you pass, they're always there. The power plays, just waiting. Split second doesn't feel like a race. It feels like an escape. You're pursued by a monstrous beast and your smartest play isn't perfect speed. It's simply outrunning your opponents or feeding them to the fire first. In that, this game presents an excellent compromise between the QTE of Watch Dogs and a true timing challenge by showing the prompt not when the enemy is in range of an explosion, but merely when they're nearby the power play. That way, you can still fight without perfect line of sight, but it remains a fight, not a trivial test of press button to delete pursuer. You'll still have to predict timing according to where the enemy is and what kind of power play you're looking at. It can be all too easy to wreck yourself if you only forget to check yourself. Oh yes, the world comes crashing down, but if you earn the right at your command, and we don't owe it to the invisible magic of hacking or intangible acts of God, but instead, diegetic expressions of the tracks themselves. Split Second organizes its carnage in an almost mathematical way. Chaos is tense, but paced. There is broad variation, depth, and a diegetic factor that amplifies the action immersively. Schedule Chernobyl for refurbishment, buckle the expressway in the city, and as for the airport, well, The core mechanic is contextualized by the tracks so well they become unforgettable. If I say airport to someone who played Split Second all those years ago, it won't be this they'll remember. It'll be screaming and bending their controllers to avoid being flattened by a 747. But the music can't avoid the impact. The hardest power plays come with the best sound design. They'll reel back the music and let the bass soar as the cruise ship eats into the harbor. They'll give a chilling pause and let the nuclear alarm fill the air in a Soviet war far from cold, but very red. Red power plays are the ones that'll make your heart skip a beat. But as much as it owes that to the spectacle, the gameplay can alter too. You didn't think the shortcut system would be boring, did you? Where a red route changer might have an aircraft carrier crush the track and change every lap thereafter, a blue one is something simpler, but no less tense. Activating one is temporary. You don't want anyone else using the shortcut you paid for. Cut it as close as possible. Or maybe you want to risk going for a rival's shortcut late. You better hope you have enough time to slip under. Or split second is gonna take a much more literal meaning. Yes, it's risk-reward that underpins the shortcuts in this game. A fact never more obvious than when it doesn't even tell you. Many of Split Second's tracks have faster alternate routes built in. No activation needed. You can cut through the gas station or slip under the power plant. But the catch is that they're also power plays. You sure no one's got their finger on the trigger? Just ready for someone to take the bait? Make sure you're the trapper, not the trapped. In these risk-reward split-second does
does introduce an element of luck to its gameplay routine. You are, in every meaningful sense, rolling the dice, but done right. There's an artistry to balancing luck with skill. Power plays are the living example. When a crane's cargo is dropped out of the sky, it's the bounce that provides a time window to gun it through the gap. Small delays and telegraphs manage to be long enough to be readable, but quick enough to be tense. Where AI will never perfectly time an explosive barrel to take you out in an instant, there are exceptions. Alternate route power plays, for example, are fair game. If you're in the gas station, there's every chance someone hits the trigger. There are other power plays that are less fair game. They're more broken game. If the sweeping construction arm is timed right, there's nothing you can do to react. But it can get worse. You respawn after the first sweep, and immediately get flattened by the second. This is where Split Second crosses the line. But there is a wisdom to being blown away every so often. Were you to wise up to the fact that the AI could only ever hit you with a fair telegraph, then basic mastery of those telegraphs would melt the tension away. By contrast to many other arcade races that create tension through unpredictable elements like traffic, Split Second has no pretensions to a perfectly competitive environment where skill factor is absolute. It isn't trying to be fair, it's trying to be tense. A risky line to walk, but Split Second walks it well enough for the experience it's trying to deliver. Sometimes you'll be frustrated, but mostly you'll be thrilled. This is the soundtrack at its slowest pace, and that's only because it needs to match the title cards. The eye of the hurricane is the short delay between events, but even here it can't stay calm. Why would you want to be calm? No one playing Split Second knows what big words mean, or can count above 20. If you want to tune engines or draw a 0-2 decal on your car, maybe you should go back to doing your science homework, or playing with Barbie dolls. Split Second wastes no time. Four stats, strength, drift, speed, and acceleration. Three manufacturers, Corbetti, Hanzo, and Ryback, with three distinct personalities, quick, balanced, and heavy. The game replicates a familiar Need for Speed physics system. Cars drift easily and broadly. You can do so with a brake or by releasing and reapplying the accelerator with a slight pause. There's a depth in the choice of how to drift that way which, including just taking it flat out, compose your three cornering choices. The hidden fourth is more stylish, being blown through the bend by a shockwave. And in this, the role of each attribute becomes clear. Want to survive those blasts? Strength. Want to go real fast? Speed. Want to blow people? Up. Drift. Simple. If you wanted any more, maybe you should try wanting something else, like not being stuck in a locker. With measured pacing, car power grows linearly, such that with every hour or so of time, your current choices will have made everything before it completely obsolete. This is a trend that fades towards the final few chapters, where instead of simply being better, they evolve into more distinct personalities. Defined by these four attributes, you'd think, but who the hell asks you to think? In reality, the stats here are important, but usually misleading. The best drift cars aren't actually the best at drifting, and the Elite 440 is supposedly a hog in corners when it's actually better than the Corbetti Pursuit. These numbers must have been written by Dream. Instead, the Corbetti Slipstream takes the drift crown. By contrast to every other option, hardly a tap sends it sideways. The things you can do in this machine are glorious. The Elite GT12 is the glass cannon. You're quicker than quick, but weaker than weak. Shockwaves have you spiraling out of control and crashing into your competitors is an absolute no. Distinct personalities. You'll wise up to your choices soon enough. You'll make them quickly, but they'll always be meaningful. In survival, the wise play is obvious. A horde of striped competitors fill the arena. They die to set the stakes. Blue shock you, red spell your doom. This is a game of evasion, but don't be so comforted. You're on the clock, past the trucks to keep your lifeline, because if that timer hits zero, sudden death. It will be sudden, but you may not see it coming. Another element of luck. You'll almost always be able to predict the red barrels, but if a corpse occludes your view, sudden death. Sometimes it won't be worth it. Most of the time it will be. Survival rides or dies on its tension. You're glued to your screen, and by God, is it fun with a friend. Bring something nimble, but most of all, strong. Elimination. Race to the finish line. Whoever gets there, lives. After one minute and then every 20 seconds, the rear is culled, so the aim of the game is to drive well enough to never concede your place. In that, the risks are amplified, and the tension is at a more consistent high than any other event. A crash can spell instant defeat far more often than it would otherwise. There may be no coming back. Not strength then, so speed? 
Think again. In the Hanzo FX350, you'll take every corner flat out, but without the power from drifting, how do you plan to cut down the pack? You've got 20 seconds. Still think betting on speed was smart? Detonator has you on your own, against the orchestrated perils of the track itself. Maybe here, the Hanzo ain't so bad. With excellent accuracy and excellent speed, you stand a chance. One far better than the Slipstream, whose 400-yard drifts gain it no power points and so no actual point. You'd be better off sliding like that, in Air Revenge, where you'll need every slither of power you can muster. Consider it a boss fight. Evade through rapidly changing danger zones to get your resource. Spend it on missiles of your own. Blues 1, Reds 4. That allows people who can't drift to save their life to save their lives, and people who can, to make this a quick death. Split Seconds game modes exploit its own strengths for everything they're worth. It's rare to see such calculated execution on the first time, but Blackrock aren't done yet. Elite races are like races, but with Baphomet worshippers, Angelina Jolie, and, most importantly, a consistent set of names. Over the literal and figurative course of the split second season, forming rivalries with them isn't just optional, it's likely. And I'll be damned if they aren't programmed with personality traits to make that bolder. Raptor or Vixen is always the one you'll battle for first. Livewire and Tor, Pedo, are always the two you'll decimate in their one strength point death traps. Hammer is immune to most shockwaves, is easy to pass, but tough to destroy. Split Second is unrelenting, broad and diverse in its instrumentation. It is composed concisely for adrenaline, and nothing but. It seems almost scientific. That's because it was meant to be. Episodes? Seasons? What does it even mean to win Split Second? It means we'll be adored by the masses. The WWE of racing, Split Second is media, in-game and out. But when you've won... Wait a minute. Hey, how are those power plays getting set off? We deactivated them after the final race. Who are these guys? No, they went off air in 82. I oh man, this ain't good. Clear the set! Now! Get out of there, I'm telling you! I It never was. It never will be. Split Second is just one side of a blighted coin. On the other is Blur. Both released in the same week. Both reviewed excellently. Both sold terribly. Both ruined their developers. Both had their sequels cancelled. Fate was tragically cruel to among the most underappreciated arcade races in living memory. And both had different stories. Black Rock was swallowed by the black hole that is Disney. Months before release, the company changed directions. No longer was it interested in AAA. Social gaming was the big new thing, so the sales never really mattered. There was no way Split Second couldn't have ended Black Rock. It was born the wrong genre. Anonymous sources knew they were done before the game ever hit store shelves. At least Activision handled things properly, they said to Shaq News. The developers of Blur got real support and feedback. We haven't. We're getting shafted. So they did. In July 2011, their doors were shut forever. 2014 was when the final light for Split Second ever shone. Alongside Epic Mickey 2, they were ported to PC. Don't make the mistake I did, and trust it. Controller support sucks thermonuclear ass, textures won't load in during later episodes, and best of all, there's a catastrophic autosave glitch that wipes your save file if you don't finish episode 6 in one sitting. As for accessibility, I can confirm this game is playable with one hand. I won't be taking any questions. This game's experience is compromised, but it's one you cannot deny yourself. Split Second murdered its maker, and then it made them immortal. Don't you ever forget it. Here's something else to not forget. Imagine not having a website in 2021. Oh my god. That is just so...
so cringe. Obviously, no one even knows what outside is anymore. But you've still got a product, a good a service, social media, an online presence. And what you need is certainty. A website gives you that certainty. Rely on no one but yourself, and a set of accessible yet thorough design tools to perfectly personalize your centralized online hub. With Squarespace, you can sell as easily as you can distribute information to your followers, blog with schedule posts, spend time with your community in exclusive member areas, and don't just take my word for it. You don't even need to enter your details until you're ready to launch. Go to www.squarespace.com slash whitelight and use code whitelight at checkout to save 10% on your next purchase of a website or domain. Special thanks go out to Fabian Flack, G Series, Duncan Austin, God's One Man 69, William Vossela, Alan Song, Chase Baker, Elijah Hayden, Chino, Fernando Marquez, Alex Graft, Linus Newman, Nathaniel Haskins, Austin Novosel, Daniel Whalan, Caleb Doss, Newts, Flip Slip Me Dick, Warthol, I Know Lucky, Effectfully, Mardi, Mr. T with Some Tea, Gurniel Kang, John Lemley, Bishop Nelson, Benjamin Carter, Lex Williams, Al Hudson, Soren 66, Dubstep Gutterfan 92, Darren Chambers, I Pay My Cam Girl So Why Not You, Joseph, Kale Quinn, Jacob Rees Vanderberg, Jake Dunnigan, AJ Sharp, Vertiguous, Ivan Vinyatin, Josephius, Craig Baker Gian, Addison Martin, Adam Abuela, Eli Weaver, Lucas O4, Alexandru Fripp to a Lake, David Gibson, Shad Stout, Laser Crystal, Jonathan Tunnel, ZZZZZZ2468, Michael Gamel, Gwyneth, Vladimir Obakov, Jake, Lubomir Mitkov, Hamish, Christopher Richardson, Hypocrite, Norm Ambroise, Nines, That's for the Birds, Brendan McDonald, Brandon Harris, Alice's World, Attila, Nathan, Rackin Hock, Justin, Uriara Heap, Devontae Williams, Matt Phobia, Dan Walker, The Last Great Opium Den, George Fitz Boodle, Bosian 22, Joshua W. Schreiner, Psy, Shade, Chance Tucker, Drop ZZ, Combat Wombat, Juris Purins, Holy Shift, Andre Baltuta, Leon Cuttendall, Abby, Dominic Jaworski, Joe Simmons, Abby, Dominic Jaworski, Joe Joe Simmons, John Fenler, My Whiskey Face, Jobba Gironi, Glorious Sexy Beast, and DJ. 